up, everybody? Welcome to episode 102 of the Tatiana Harness podcast. Today, I'm going to be updating you on some of the women's college basketball games that have been going on. And I'm really excited because there have been some amazing and incredible games since the last time I spoke to you guys. So I'm actually going to go through this entire week because, I don't know, it's just been really amazing. So um, first off, I hope everybody is doing well so far. And yeah, that's about it. So, we'll go back to Monday, November 28th. By the way, this podcast might be a little bit quicker. Pretty busy today, but I still wanted to get one in for you guys, so let's get to it. So, number 23-ranked Gonzaga played against unranked Maine. Um, Gonzaga is ranked number 23. I think I just said that, but (laughs) whatever. Um, they ended up beating Maine by 19. I'm probably going to be going over, like, all the ranked teams and then potentially a couple of other unranked teams. Um, but for Gonzaga, their leading scorer that game was... If my internet would load, sometimes my internet's slow in my room. Uh, Kayleen Truong. Uh, She is a senior. She ended up with 15 points, and she played really well for them. And she also had six assists and three rebounds. So I don't really know much about Gonzaga this year. I knew them a lot better last year, Uh, but I do know, I mean, obviously they're ranked. They are 6-1 and as of Monday, so they have been impressive so far this year. All right, that was really, um, there weren't many games on Monday, the 28th, but we're now going to go to Tuesday, the 29th. So this was the amazing game that I was talking about between the number one ranked South Carolina and number 15 ranked UCLA. So South Carolina ended up pulling off this win, but only by nine. So it was a really close game, and it honestly was so good. I loved looking at the stats of this game. We'll start off with UCLA, the Bruins. So Charisma Osborne was their leading scorer with 24, and then she also had six rebounds. And then also Kiki Rice was number second, was second. She had 16 points and five rebounds as well. So both of them played really well. Um, I would say that was really about it for them, though. Uh, Be- Bezor, I think is how you say her last name. She contributed 10 points and eight rebounds. So that was well, but really that was about it. So I think they just needed some more overall from everybody else. For South Carolina, their leading scorer was Aaliyah Boston. She had 18 points, 10 rebounds. And then uh, Cord- Cardoso, coming off the bench, had 16 points and 9 rebounds. So she played really well. And then Bozia Cook and Fletcher had 12 points. And Fletcher actually also had 10 rebounds. So they had a bunch of rebounds that game. Um, but their three-point percentage for South Carolina was terrible, actually. They were 1 for 14. So they didn't shoot the ball very well, but their field goals were 27 for 68, 39%. So that was the biggest reason why they won. I think uh, for UCLA, they just needed some more players to contribute. But it it ended up being a really good game, and so I was expecting that. I recorded it, and I watched it. My goodness, so good. All right, then uh, also on Tuesday, there was a lot of games on Tuesday. Uh, Iowa State played against SIUE. They ended up winning by 50, and for Iowa State, their league score was Don- Donarski. She had 22 points and 6 assists, and then Ryan had 13 points, and then both Soares and Ashley Jones had 11 points, and Soares had 10 rebounds, and Jones had 7 rebounds, so everybody played well. They uh, bench got a bunch of minutes, and they ended up scoring a lot of points off the bench, actually. All right, then we go to a team who's been playing pretty well, uh, LSU, but they played against SELA, um, and actually they kept it really close. LSU only won by eight in that game, so it ended up being really close for some reason. Um, But for LSU, Angel Reese went off again as per usual. She had 25 points and 11 rebounds, and then... Jay Carson had 16 points and 10 rebounds, and then after that, nobody got above 10 points. So I think just nobody other, nobody else's shot was really going in, especially for three. I mean, they shot okay, 5 for 20, which is 
Um, and then they shot 41% from the field, but it doesn't look like they took very many shots either. So that's a little interesting. That game ended up being interesting. All right, then we're going to move on to Wednesday. And let's see. What were some good games or ranked teams that played? So Purdue was a team that was ranked or that was close to being ranked at the beginning of the year and they've actually done really well this year. They played um Purdue played against Syracuse. I know right now is when all of like the tournaments are going on. It has been like last week and this week and then the tournaments will kind of end for a little bit and there'll probably be one more. So there was the ACC slash Big Ten challenge and these two teams ended up playing against each other. Purdue got the win by nine. And Purdue's leading scorer was Petri, and she ended up with 31 points. She went off that game. Um, And then on the other side for Syracuse, Hyman had 26 points. So it was a pretty high-scoring game, 87-78. to Obviously, Purdue ended up pulling off the win, so good for them. But it um, it ended up being a pretty good game overall. All right, so then we're going to stay in the ACC slash Big Ten Challenge. And we had Ohio State, number four ranked Ohio State, played against number 18 ranked Louisville. And man, oh man, Ohio State played incredible. They beat Louisville by 19. Um, Louisville, I'm telling you, I mean, they started off as like, I think it was the number six ranked team, if I remember correctly, somewhere in the top 10. And they've already dropped to 18th. I think they're going to be out of the rankings soon coming up soon i could see them this week maybe being towards the end towards the bottom of the rankings but by next by the week after i could see them dropping out for sure um louisville hasn't been very impressive this year like everybody thought that they would be so for ohio state they had three players score 20 plus which is incredible but mike Sell, sheldon and i cannot say her last name <laughs> but she's a forward mike lu michaela sicka something Um, they had 26, 22, and 21, so impressive, and they only played seven players in that game, so obviously their starters played a lot of minutes, and that was really impressive. For Louisville, Haley Van Lith was their leading scorer with 20 points and also 10 rebounds, and then there was two other people in double digits, and then after that, it just dropped. Um, you also had Carr and Jones with 15 and 14 points. So, um, again, I just don't think Louisville has been as impressive as everybody thought they were going to be this year. But going back to Ohio State, they shot the three ball really well, 8 for 15, so 53% from three. And then their field goal percentage was 59% compared to Louisville's 43%. So, Ohio State shot the ball amazing, which obviously uh, shows why they pulled off the win. I'm going to go to a game that was interesting um, because nobody was really expecting it to be this close. But Arizona State and GCU played each other, and Arizona State only won by 8 against GCU, 80-72. to 72. And I actually, um, this game was like a late night game, so I ended up watching the end. But GCU was ahead by like 4 with... Um, I don't know, what was it, maybe three minutes to go? Obviously, ASU ended up pulling off a big run at the end. Um, but the leading scorer for ASU is Ty Skidder. She's so good, and she's really impressive. And that's a player I uh, look up to because she is a smaller guard, and she creates space so well. Um, her mid-range pull-up is incredible. So she ended up with 29 points that game. And for GCU, everybody honestly played pretty well, but... Uh, T. Brown had 15 points and 11 rebounds, and then ever there was like one, two, three, four, five, five players total in double digits. So they were super impressive. They played a lot better than I thought they would. All right, and then we go over to st- number two ring. Stanford played against SCU and Santa Clara, and Stanford. Stanford, my goodness, won by 13. Um, ended up being a closer game than anybody thought as well, but. Stanford 182 to 69. Um, their leading scorer was Haley Jump. She's been really impressive for them this year. She's been shooting the three ball really well. But she had 19 points in there. She also had four three pointers in there. And uh, Uriofin. So she is their other 
or wait, no, she is, yeah, outside of Cameron Brink, she's their other forward slash center that has been playing really well. She has 16 points and six rebounds, and they, uh, I'd say the reason why I got so close at the end was because Stanford played a lot of their bench in this game. They went really deep. They played like a million players, but um, Stanford was ahead the entire game, but it did get close every once in a while. Um, Actually, I think it was a one point. Wait, hang on. I'm looking at. Oh, yeah, no. Stanford was ahead the entire time, but still, it ended up being a pretty decently close game. All right, then we're going to move on to Thursday, December 1st, which, by the way, December is, like, one of the most amazing times of the year. So I hope everybody has a great December and a great end to their year. All right, so we're going to move on to back to the ACC slash Big Ten Challenge. So Duke and Northwestern played each other. I know Duke at the beginning of the year was right on the verge of getting ranked um, in the top 25. And I could still see them being up there. They've had some good wins, only one loss. So Duke beat Northwestern 66-50. to Their leading scorer was Ashlyn Jackson, actually, off of the bench. She had 10 points, uh, but everybody contributed for Duke today. Or that game. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. I mean, literally everybody that got in the game scored. So that was really impressive. But for Northwestern, they didn't really have um, a main standout player. I mean, Mott had 13 points and 10 rebounds. But that was about it. Duke is... Uh, I watched their first couple games of the season. And they've been really impressive. They move the ball really well. And they get out in transition so quickly. So it's really exciting to watch them. All right. Another huge, ginormous, big, and amazing game was Indiana against North Carolina. So Indiana's ranked number five. North Carolina's ranked number six. So I talked about this game at the beginning of the week, and oh my goodness, it ended up being such a great game for Indiana. Um, I don't really know. I was shocked North Carolina lost by this much, but Indiana beat them by 24, so it ended up being a blowout for Indiana. Um, I was really shocked that it wasn't a closer game, but, you know, Indiana must really be that good this year. (laughs) So for Indiana, M. Holmes had 25 points, uh, Parrish had 24 points, and uh, Scalia, so everybody in the starting lineup got above double digits except for Garzin, but she had 9 points and 7 rebounds and 7 assists, so everybody played really well for them, obviously, they were playing good basketball, they shot the ball amazing, 54% from 3-pointers and then 53% from field goal percentage. Um, going over to North Carolina, their leading scorer was Todd Williams, she scored 20 um, and then Deja Kelly only had 11 and 7 assists, but they shot the three ball well, 50%, and then field goal percentage was down that 35%, so Deja Kelly went 3 for 12 from field goals, so I could see that being a reason why, um, but obviously I heard the broadcasting announcer say, because I didn't get to watch this entire game, that just North Carolina wasn't playing how they normally are with, like, the tenacious intensity that they have and just pushing, pushing, pushing the ball at the court. So that's a little bit interesting. Obviously, Indiana slowed them down a lot, but it's um, – I was expecting Indiana to win. I Wait, no, I think I said North Carolina. <laughs> but uh, I was expecting it to be a way closer game. I'll just say that. All right, so another amazing, incredible game um, – was this day on um December 1st was number 7 ranked Notre Dame against number 20 ranked Maryland. So this game, I watched the ending on the day of, and I watched the entire game the day after, and I have to say these two teams were going at it. Um, There were a lot of missed layups, actually, by both teams, so it would have been interesting if all of those would have went in. But, man, this game came close down the stretch. It was amazing. But Maryland ended up winning by a buzzer beater by two points, 74 to 72. So Maryland pulled off the upset against Notre Dame. Um, And in this one, Diamond Miller actually shot the final shot with about – she had the ball with about five seconds to go, was at the left elbow, cleared out to the three-point line, and then she drove an attack and hit like a one-leg fadeaway with like – 
as the buzzer was going off, it was off her hands in time, and she made it. So she ended up with 31 points and 12 rebounds that game. She went off. Another person that did really well for them was Sellers. She had 17 points, and 10 of those being in the first quarter. So she started off really strong for Maryland, and she was actually, like, one of the only ones that could score at the beginning. For <clears throat> Notre Dame, their leading scorer was Citron with 24 points and 10 rebounds. And her 24 points, man, she shot the three ball so well at the beginning. She started with four straight threes in a row. She ended up four for five from three, but she made all four in a row at the beginning. Um, and, I mean, she was doing a little bit of everything. I think she got the game-tying basket, actually. Um, and she just, she was doing everything. And then secondly was Olivia Miles. She had 14 points and seven rebounds. She unfortunately had, like, four fouls I think towards the end of the game so she had to sit out majority oh excuse me she had to sit out majority of the fourth quarter so I think that hurt Notre Dame for sure not having their actual point guard in the game but it ended up being really really good um yeah I mean that game was incredible probably one of the best games I've seen in a while for sure um, let's see. There were a couple other ranked teams that played this day, but I don't really think I want to go over it. This was the game I was talking about. Okay. Okay. So, number 10 ranked Iowa played against number 12 ranked NC State. Oh, my goodness. Caitlin Clark went absolutely crazy. She ended up with 45 points. That's incredible. Um... But uh, North Carolina NC State ended up pulling off the win. They ended up winning by 13, 94 to 81 over Iowa. So I definitely see Iowa dropping. Obviously, they've played a really tough schedule so far. Um, but, I mean, Iowa needs some other players to step up. I mean, Caitlin Clark, she had 45, but then there was only one other player in double dig- digits, which was Warnock with 15 and 7. Um I just think, I mean, yeah, they have some decent shooters, but they need some other players to step up for sure because towards the end of the game, NC State was catching on to Caitlin Clark a little bit. Like, they slowed her down. Um, I mean, obviously, Caitlin Clark's, like, basically been unstoppable this entire season so far, but still, they needed some other players to do something because, um, I mean, she's... Shazano, she only had five points and nine rebounds, but she only took four shots. So definitely need her shooting some more because she is very powerful inside. But for NC State, I mean, they played amazing. Sanaya Rivers off the bench had 22 points, and Diamond Johnson also had 22 points and nine rebounds as um, both guards. That was impressive. Um, but they had one, two, three, four. They had five players that got in double digits, and they just played really well. They played as a team, everything. And so that was really impressive. But obviously, NC State pulled off the win. They uh, After that game, they're 7-1, and one, and I could see them moving up in the rankings a little bit. And I see Iowa dropping for sure, especially, I mean, they're 5-3. and three. I know one of their losses was to UConn, obviously, NC State, and then Drake. Or Wait, was it Drake? I'm pretty sure it was Drake. Um, but, yeah, definitely, definitely impressive. All right, so we're going to go to another good game real fast, and then we'll move on to the next game. Um, but number 17, Michigan, played against Unranked Miami, but this ended up being a closer game. Um, Michigan did win by 12 for Michigan. Their leading scorer was Lee Brown, who had 26 points. And then Kaiser, Emily Kaiser, who's been really impressive for them this year. She's kind of, um, been a standout for sure. She had 20 points. And then, uh, Philia, who's a sophomore. I've been impressed by her for sure. Uh, she had 12 points. And for Miami, Haley Cavender, I always get them mixed up, but Haley Cavender has 17 and uh, Hardinan had 13, and Warrior off the bench had 12 points and 8 rebounds. So, I mean, Miami played well overall. I do think that they were expecting to shoot the 3 a little bit better, though. They shot at 21%, 3 for 14. So, definitely expected them to shoot the 3 ball a little bit better, and I think it could have been a closer game for sure. All right, now we're going to move on to Friday because there were some good games here as well. Um, 
But I know before I'd said that I think that Marquette should get ranked, but they they are ranked now. They're ranked number 24th. They got the win against Georgetown. They ended up winning that game by 21. Um, UConn played against Providence, and uh, they won by 45 in that game. And for UConn, Aubrey Griffin had an incredible game. She had 18 points and 10 rebounds. And then uh, Lopez, shoot, I don't know how to say the last part, but she is another guard slash forward that does a little bit of everything. She played well. She had 18 points. Azzy had 16 points. And Nina Mule had 7 points, 12 assists. Uh, Aaliyah Edwards had 14 points, 10 rebounds. And then uh, Kaylin Ducharme had 10 points off the bench. So obviously UConn just plays really well in, like, literally everything. <laughs> Um, we also had another great game, uh, number 13, Crayon played against 25, Villanova, and they blew them out by 21, 67 to 46. Definitely thought this should be a closer game. I did think that Villanova was going to be ranked, though. I think they were ranked before, but I thought they were going to drop a little bit. Um, but Crayon played really well. Uh, Morganson had 22 points, and then Molly had 16 points. For Villanova, I mean, it was basically one player, which was Segrist. Who she's been impressive for them this year. She had twenty five points and eight rebounds, and um, that was about it for them. But guys, uh, real fast, I had somebody walk in here as I was doing my podcast. Lily, you want to say hi? Hi. Well, um, how's basketball been going for you? Good. Can you come a little bit closer? I don't know if they can hear you. Good. Good. Yeah. How's school? Good. Are you getting good grades? Yeah. Yeah, anything fun for you lately? No. No? Um, it's almost Christmas. What do you want? What's the number one present you want for Christmas? It's like a pixie. A pixie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and then, a, oh. And a basketball. And a, another basketball? You have like 20 basketballs, silly. Mm-hmm. Um, and last thing, have you been finding the elf on the shelf every morning? Yes. He's hidden in some pretty cool cool spots, right? He wanted to have a snowball fight with you the other day, right? Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Well, thanks for saying hi, Lily. Mm Mm-hmm. Anything you want to say to everybody listening? Mm -hmm. No, I don't have anything. You don't have anything? Okay, thanks for coming, Lily. All right, you guys. Lily really wanted to say hi, so I let her say hi. But going back... um. What was the next game? Oh, okay. So, um, Texas played against USF, and which is South Florida. And t- Texas is still ranked somehow, ranked number 22. Um, but they lost to USF by five. So, they're definitely not going to be ranked after this. Um, USF played really, really well. Um Pew, pew, Pewesis, I think is how you say it. She had 25 points, and then S- Saniki had 22 points, and then Fancom something had 13 points and 10 rebounds. Um, so their starters played really well. The bench did not play very well. But um, for Texas, I mean, they shot the ball really well. They had they shot fifty percent from three point fi- from the three point field, and then forty percent from field goal percentage. But I mean, I guess they're just not able to win um that's this crazy and scary thing um but yeah texas i don't think is going to be ranked anymore that's for sure all right then we go on to yesterday's games which was on saturday let's see i'm pretty sure there was one good game in here somewhere if i can find it i know south carolina played against memphis but that ended up being a blowout um oregon number ranks number 19 played against portland but they ended up winning by, like, 39 that game. And then UCLA played against UCSB, and this actually ended up being a pretty close game. Um, but UCLA only won by 11 against UCSB. Um, Charisma Osborne had 19 points, and then Kiki Rice had 14 and 8. Jack, or Hockey is coming off the bench at 12 points. Um, for UCSB, uh, Martin... Has 17 points. She's their leading scorer. I don't know. That just for some reason ended up being a close game. But yesterday's games, yeah, there were some close ones. But nothing really that stands out. 
All right, for today's games, I know that there's some going on right now as I speak, but there are a million games going on, so you should definitely have fun. But number 18 ranked Louisville plays against MTSU. Number 11 ranked LSU plays against Tulane. Both of those are on ESPN+. Plus. Um, Going up, going up, going up. Uh, number 21 ranked Baylor plays against Houston Christian. That's on ESPN+, Plus as well. Number 14 ranked Arizona plays against New Mexico, and that's both at 1 o'clock. And two amazing games right here. Number 2 Stanford plays against number 23 Gonzaga. And a TV game on ABC. Number three, UConn plays against number seven, Notre Dame at one o'clock. That's going to be a really exciting game. Um, by the way, when I say these times, this is Arizona time. So for Eastern time, if you're on the Eastern time, it's three o'clock Eastern for you. Or if you're Pacific time, it's 12 o'clock. Or, yeah, it's 12 o'clock for you. Um, number 17, Michigan plays against Northwestern. Number 13, Creighton plays against St. John's. Number 10, Iowa plays against Wisconsin. Number 5, Indiana plays against Illinois. Number 25, Villanova plays against Providence. Number 24, Mar Marquette plays against Seton Hall. Number 20, Maryland plays against Nebraska. Number 9, Virginia Tech plays against Tennessee. And right now, number 4 ranked Ohio State is playing against Rutgers as I speak. It's halftime. Ohio State is winning 43-28, to and Mikasel already has 19 points for them, and um, that's been, like, the main player for them. So, some really good games on today. I hope you guys all tune in and watch those. I know there's another, I mean, it's going to be a really exciting week of college basketball. Let's see if there's any ranked games against each other this upcoming week. Ooh, um, tomorrow, Monday, December 5th, number 12, NC State plays against Georgia. That should be a good game because Georgia's 8-1 and one right now. Um, let's see. Okay, so on Wednesday, December 7th, 8 ranked Iowa State plays against number 10, Iowa. That's on ESPN, too. That, so that should be a pretty good game. Um, two top-ranked teams playing against each other. Um, let's see. Nothing on Thursday. There's just a lot of games in general. Um, on Saturday... Hmm. Number 13, Creighton plays against Drake. That should be interesting. I wonder if Drake could pull off another upset, potentially. Um, on Sunday, December 11th, this should be a good game. Um, number 3 ranked UConn plays against number 20 ranked Maryland. UConn's had a really tough schedule this year, actually, but they're 6-0 right now. They pulled off some good wins. We will see if they could top over Maryland on Sunday, but... That's just about it. I appreciate everybody listening in today. This ended up being a longer podcast than I thought, but there's been some amazing, incredible games, just like there's going to be some incredible ones this week. Excited to see the upsets that are ever going to be coming up. Um, I know I have a big tournament at the end of this week, or on Thursday. I play, I play Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, so I'm so excited. It's a lot of games this week, so... I might, I'm going to be pretty busy. I'm going to try to get a podcast into you guys again next Sunday. Um, so, yes, make sure you stay tuned for another good week of basketball. And I appreciate you all listening in. That wraps up episode 102 of the Tatiana.